Ever had a homebrew that tasted flat or dull or just kind of meh? You might have needed to adjust your acid. In wine, acid is almost as important as tannin and sugar and ABV, their alcohol by volume. And the same is true for meads and ciders. Acid provides structure and complexity, and acid can cut through an overbearing sweetness and can help balance sweetness and tannin. Generally, I like to talk about balance in wine, mead, and cider as kind of a three-pronged approach. You've got acid and tannin and sweetness. And if your brew is tasting a little too sweet or a little too flabby, you might need just a little bit of acid to cut through that and give it a little extra bite. In this video, we're going to take a look at three of the most common acids used in home brewing, generally where they kind of come from in nature, and how to use them to balance your wine, cider, or mead. So buckle up, we've got a lot of information coming your way. Malic acid is a big, round acid. It's not sharp, it's not cutting or biting, it's just kind of a big mouthful of acid. Generally, you'll find it in fruits like apples or cherries, or sometimes in vegetables like rhubarb. When you bite into a big, juicy Granny Smith apple, that hit of acid you get that's malic acid. It's the dominant acid in cider, and so it's also the dominant acid in meads made with apple juice and honey called a sizer. And if your brew is feeling a little flat or lifeless, you might need a little bit of malic acid in there just to kind of punch through the sweetness and provide some of that apple-y kind of character that your brew may be lacking. So if your brew is feeling like it's lacking something and you feel like that something might be acidity, consider adding malic acid to give it a little bit of that green apple punch. Tartaric acid is very crisp and dry, and it's a lot of times called an angular acid because it kind of feels pointy in your mouth. This is in contrast to other acids like malic acid that feel very round on your palate. Tartaric acid is sharp. In nature, tartaric acid is found in a lot of different fruits, but where we might be most familiar with the flavor of tartaric acid is in grapes, and it is the dominant acid in almost all wines that you're going to find on your grocery store shelf. A surprisingly big source of tartaric acid is in tamarind, and you can actually use tamarind paste for an acid balance in wines and meats. Not that you would necessarily want to, because tartaric acid is available in a convenient powder. Tartaric acid is the backbone acid in grape wines, but it can also be used in other styles of brew. Maybe you want to add a little sharpness to your cider, or maybe you're making a piment, which is a mead made with a wine base, and you might need a little bit more of that acid structure to give it that real winey vibe. Tartaric acid is a very popular choice for balancing acids in wines and meads. Citric acid is punchy and bright and zesty. It's the dominant acid found in citrus fruits like grapefruits, lemons, limes, and oranges. And citric acid provides a big hit of freshness when used to balance your homebrew. Citric acid is also found in pineapples and passion fruit and can be used to provide a nice acid background to tropical or citrus forward meads, wines, or ciders. If your homebrew is feeling a little bit flabby and lifeless, citric acid might be what you need because it provides a big pop of acidity. It's nice and crisp, and it provides brightness and a sensation of freshness. It's zesty. Generally, there are three categories where you might consider balancing the acid in your homebrew, specifically in mead, wine, or cider. Let's take a look. Maybe you have a sweetness that lingers without any lift. Maybe there's no structure or cut to the flavor. It kind of feels like you're ringing just one note on the marimba of flavor. Or maybe the mouthfeel is just overall kind of dull, and you can tell that there's something missing that would give a little bit of life to your brew. 
Generally, it's best to taste test as soon as you hit final gravity and do periodic taste testings up until bottling because you want to have your brews as best balanced as you can before you seal them up in bottles. But how do you choose the right acid for the job? Well, it's best to try and match the character of what it is you're brewing. Are you brewing something apple heavy, like a sizer or a cider? Consider adding some malic acid if you feel that it needs a bit of an acid boost. Or if you're making something that's grape forward, like a grape wine or a piment, or just a fruit wine that needs a little bit of extra something, tartaric acid might be what you need to give it a little bit more of that backbone. Or if you're making something tropical or fresh or bright, or even like a hard seltzer, you might need a little citric acid to give it that oomph that you need to bring that freshness and brightness back. Consider adding acid for balance, like seasoning your food. You never want to go too far because you can always add more acid, but you can't take it away, at least not easily. So let's take a look at balancing acids. There are certainly complicated ways out there of performing bench trials to decide exactly which acid and how much you want to add to your brew, but the simplest way is to pull out just a few samples, about an ounce each, and just add pinches of the different acids to them and taste them and see how that transforms the brew. Once you've settled on what you like, you can start adding a little bit of acid every day tasting after 24 hours to make sure it's dissolved, and eventually when the flavor hits just right, you know you're done. What we would recommend is starting very low, a quarter to a half a gram at a time per gallon of brew. So say you're balancing a cider and you want to add some malic acid. You could add a quarter of a gram of malic acid to your carboy and then 24 hours later taste it. If you like it, you're done. If not, maybe consider adding another quarter of a gram. I personally like to do it just with a dash at a time. There's no harm in just putting in a dash, waiting 24 hours, and then taking a taste. Because again, you can always add more acid, but it's really difficult to remove it. And you can repeat this process of adding just a little bit of acid every day until the flavor is perfect. There's no harm in briefly opening up the carboy and adding a little bit of acid to make those adjustments. If you're really going all in and you would like to repeat this recipe in the future, you could use a pH testing tool, like a digital pH meter, and that would allow you to dial in your acid to the exact same pH the next time you do that brew. Acid isn't just for structure. It can complement all the flavors in your brew. And so you don't always want to rely on your recipe. Your honey may be different, your juice or fruit may be different, and so you really want to rely on your palate and your flavor preference every time you're acid balancing. You can get it close with a pH meter, but you really want to be tasting that to make sure it's to your palate preference. And you may not want to always rely on your palate alone. You might want to bring in a loved one or a friend and do some triangle testing to see what you both really like or don't like about the acid balance. Because you guys are the ones who are going to be drinking this. So you want to make sure it is your flavor preference that you're catering to. So if you want to level up your brews, get to know your acids. Do some taste testing. Add those acids in small amounts and you'll be on your way to brewing like a pro. Do you have tips on acid balancing? Have you found something that really works or have you used an acid in an unconventional way? Maybe you're loading up your sizer with a big hit of tartaric acid. Let us know, drop a comment below and make sure you hit that subscribe button. You don't wanna miss out on any future content here at Craft Brew. We have a lot of exciting stuff coming in the next few months. I'm BC here for Craft Brew and until I see you next time, I hope you've got good things brewing.